All right, let's get some analysis now from David DeRoche. He is an associate professor at the Near East South Asia Center at the National Defense University and joins me from Washington. Professor, uh, this $33 billion aid package is a significant ramping up in aid from the U.S. Of course, we've seen previous aid packages, but nothing quite to this uh, caliber. Why are we seeing this now, and is this a sign, you think, of the U.S. getting more involved in the war? Well, yeah, I think that... Uh the initial aid package was sort of a uh, all hands on deck fire drill catch as catch can to uh, uh, forestall a disaster. Basically, I think that um, everybody in the West was surprised by the level of Ukrainian resistance to the Russian invasion. This is a more deliberative package. It shows that uh, Ukraine is going to be fighting for a long time, and it gives Ukraine the tools to actually sustain combat against Russian forces that are not as well supplied. So um, I think that, you know, part of it is to build the Ukrainian capacity. Part of it is send a message to the Russians that, you know, they, they need to think about this because this is not going to be done quickly. As far as that message to Russia, how do you think Russia will respond to this? Do you think that Putin will see it as a provocation or uh, perhaps uh, amount to a direct attack by the U.S.? I think he'll try to get us in the West to think that way because, you know, Putin, we've seen him already about five times trying to remind the world of, uh, of uh, Russia's nuclear arsenal and to portray any support of Ukraine as uh, a provocation. But, you know, look, it, it, Ukraine is a sovereign nation. To accept that it's a provocation means that you accept uh, that Russia has dominion over Ukraine, and they clearly don't. But he's going to say that, uh, yeah. And, uh, you know, he's said it before, and he'll say it again. More than two months now since um, the Russian operation began in Ukraine. I know we've talked about this before, but what are your thoughts on the situation like there? Because it still seems like Russia is having logistical difficulties and facing fierce resistance from Ukrainians. Yeah, and their, their logistical difficulties are going to get worse. So the Ukrainian forces destroyed a key railroad bridge that runs out of Crimea into Kyrgyzstan. Uh, it appears that what the Russians are trying to do is encircle the main, the pre-February Ukrainian army, which is primarily in the east facing uh, the two breakaway republics of Donetsk and Luhansk. Um, the Russians are trying to encircle that. They're not making progress. The Ukrainians are trying to encircle the pincers. And they may also, uh, as they attack the logistic supply lines that seek to encircle them, they may also launch an attack in the south against Kyrgyzstan, uh, the approaches to Ukraine, which would bring, mo or Crimea, which would bring most of Crimea within Ukrainian uh, missile range. So there's a possibility that um, I think the Ukrainians are going to take this offensive, sap Russian strength, and then possibly counterattack in a few weeks. You know, I've been hesitant to bring up uh, the issue of nuclear weapons, but uh, President Biden saying that Russian comments about the possibility of a nuclear war were irresponsible. Do you think that nuclear weapons could come into play here? I, I don't think so. I mean, um, chemical weapons, definitely. I think that um, the Russians will probably use chemical weapons in Mariupol uh, against the uh, uh, remaining garrison that's pretty much underground. Uh, nuclear weapons, I don't think so. I think that, again, Putin is trying to impose a degree of self-restraint uh, upon the West. He's trying to scare the West into abandoning Ukraine. That's why he does that. But I don't think he realistically will use them. All right. We'll leave it there for now. Professor David DeRoche joining us from Washington. Thank you.